Hi there, everyone. My name is Scott. Welcome back to the Movie Reviewers 100. Um, our theme this week is on Bob Hoskins, who passed away very recently. A uh, very beloved uh, actor from the UK. Of course, he starred in Who Framed Roger Rabbit um, and a lot of other films. I believe uh, that uh, James earlier this week reviewed Super Mario Brothers, which is something that he started with John Leguizamo about 21 years ago. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I wanted to uh, check out a movie that I'd been aware of for a long time but hadn't seen, and that is uh, a gangster picture called The Long Good Friday. Uh, it was uh, directed by James McKenzie. I'm on the wrong IMDb page here. Sorry about that. Sorry, John McKenzie. John McKenzie, um, who I really wasn't familiar with, um, one of his uh, 80s movies uh, after this one was The Fourth Protocol with Michael Caine. And when I saw that title, I thought, hmm, Pierce Brosnan is in that movie too, isn't it? And I checked, and yes, he was. Pierce Brosnan actually makes a small appearance in The Long Good Friday um, though he doesn't have any dialogue, I don't think. Uh, not that I remember. Anyway, I just saw the movie for the first time. Never seen it before. Um, Bob Hoskins plays um, a gangster, a very um, prosperous gangster, who's uh, basically ruling over a largely peaceful underworld uh, in London. And um, he's uh, <clears throat> into getting legit business uh, as well as uh, illegitimate. Um, and he's, uh, to that effect, he's uh, gathered some... Um, high-profile investors and businessmen um, to, uh, to uh, put money into a piece of property uh, where the 80 Olympics is scheduled to be held. Uh, among those people is um, an American and his lawyer. Turns out they're actually mob-affiliated. Um, so as the picture opens, Bob Hoskins um, and his lady, Helen Mirren, are basically gathering all this together. They're going to be entertaining the Americans um, for the day, but... Um, there has been uh, some unfortunate and sudden trouble involving people setting bombs in places where he uh, is likely to be. Um, and one of his associates, one of his longtime close associates, is stabbed uh, in a public pool. And it's just crazy, you know, he just doesn't understand what's happening here. And so he has to unravel the mystery of exactly who it is uh, that he's under, at under attack by. Because clearly it seems like they're trying to disrupt this business uh, and, and send the investors uh, running scared. Um, but he just doesn't know for sure, and so he's um, uh, pulling every string that he can and getting all of his guys to interrogate as many people as possible in order to find this out. Um, the uh, famous image from this movie, of course, is Bob Hoskins and his men standing in front of a line of people who are dangling uh, by their feet from meat hooks uh, in a meat plant um, uh, because he's questioning them about um, what's going on and who he's under attack by. He's got cops in his pocket. He's got, you know, friends and associates everywhere, people that he pays for information. Um, but no one seems to be able to help him. No one seems to know where the trouble is coming from, and that's really frustrating for him. And he's trying like hell to keep the Americans happy and to keep them thinking that everything is okay and that there's no problems uh, that he's got to be dealing with here. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a real good movie. I liked it a lot. It's got a great synthesizer theme uh, that opens and closes the movie. Um, like I said, Pierce Brosnan is in it. Also, another actor um, who, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I can't remember. Oh, Paul Freeman. Sorry, Paul Freeman is his name. Um, he played Belloc in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, and I recognized him from somewhere when I watched the movie. And I went, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know this guy. Who is this guy? I had to go look him up afterwards to find out uh, who he was. Um, but yeah, aside from that, no, not a whole lot of familiar faces to me, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, real good movie. I'm glad I, uh, I'm glad I saw it. Um, as I said, um, the director, uh, is, uh, John McKenzie. I was wondering if he was related to David McKenzie, who is another UK director. He did Perfect Sense with Ewan McGregor and Eva Green. And he did, uh, another film that I like called Hallam Foe with Sophia Miles. Um, but they're not related, apparently. Um, I also wanted to just mention, um, the, uh, something I've been reading about the last couple of months. It's called the Bechdel Test. Um, it was basically invented by a cartoonist uh, who was inspired by something that was told to her by her uh, personal martial arts instructor um, about the significance of female roles in movies um, and whether or not uh, female characters are well represented uh, in a film. And, and sort of, it, it doesn't really work so much with individual movies because Saving Private Ryan, which many will agree is an excellent movie, has very, very few females in it. <laughs> In fact, uh, the, you know, none of them on the battlefield, obviously. It's a World War II movie. Um, and with The Long Good Friday, um, again, you've got a lot of gangsters. 
uh, who are, uh, of course, men. Very few female characters. Um, the Bechdel test, basically, is what you apply to any one particular movie, whereby you look at a movie and say, okay, are there at least two significant female characters with dialogue? And do those characters at any point in the movie talk to each other? And when they do, do they talk about something besides a man? <laughs> Anything at all. <laughs> and many, many movies fail this test. Now, like I said, with, um, with Saving Private Ryan, you know, there, uh, there just isn't a lot of female characters in it. There's a few, like, minor characters who pop up in individual scenes. Um, and with The Long Good Friday, you've got a female character here and there. Obviously, Helen Mirren <coughs> doesn't really associate with any other women throughout the entire picture. Um, and the few female characters, aside from her, don't meet each other as well. Also, uh, a movie like Gravity has really only one female character, and she's in isolation in space. She's by herself. So, by this test, um, the, these particular movies would fail the test, but that doesn't necessarily make them uh, bad movies. Um, the test is, is best used to examine large groups of films and to look for trends, basically, in filmmaking. As it turns out, I think like something like 63 or greater percent of the American movies that are made have male lead characters, um, and, and, uh, which is uh, cockeyed because um, female uh, uh, people, uh, women who go to the movies basically make up more than half of the audience. Um, of course, I know some, uh, a few women that actually prefer action movies that are male-driven because they're more exciting and conflict-driven. I don't know. Um, but if you look at, you know, again, it's not necessarily an ind indicator of quality. If you look at American Hustle, um, there are a number of female characters, um, and there is a, a point in the movie where two of them talk to each other about something other than a man, but it's nail polish. <laughs> they talk about nail polish. Uh, of course, there are a lot of female-driven movies that have large ensemble casts, and so those easily pass the Bechdel test. But again, it's it's more looking at sort of the overall picture of, of trends as far as, you know, how great of an importance are female characters uh, in, you know, the stories, basically, of films that are being made, and how uh, greatly do those uh, uh, characters uh, depend on sort of their relationship with male characters in order to, you know, because what they're looking for is more fully rounded female characters. Um, anyway, I've got a couple links in the description uh, on this video. Um, one is to the Wikipedia page on the Bechdel test, um, and um, there's a, an ar a couple articles about it as well. Um, so the links in the, are in the description if you'd like to uh, look at that. I was thinking about both this movie and the movie I reviewed last week, Dogma, um, which is a Kevin Smith movie, it has lots of male characters, of course, that are crude and crass, but it does pass the Bechdel test because the main character is Linda Fiorentino, and she has, you know, conversations with characters played by um, Salma Hayek and uh, Janine Garofalo about something other than men. And, of course, she talks to God at the end, who's played by Lannis Morissette. Of, of course, God doesn't actually say anything to her. She just goes, um, anyway, um, anyway, I just thought you might find it interesting. Uh, I do. I've been reading more about it, so I want to talk a, little, a lot about, uh, about it a little bit. Excuse me. Um, so we've got a new theme starting tomorrow, and uh, if you uh, are not on our Facebook page, please visit and uh, offer suggestions for themes in the future. Um, appreciate it very much. Thank you. Bye.